Hey, it's Mike here, and today the origins of COVID appear to have solidified quite a bit based off some very recent new studies in the journal Science by credible authors funded by the NIH. I know people are super done with COVID, but it's really important to understand the origins as much as possible in order to prevent the next one, the next pandemic. And I really wanted to get this information out, even though it's gonna get dark soon here in Barcelona. So I hope I can finish this before the screen just turns black, we'll see. In terms of the science, we have one study that looked at some more genomic data at the different strains at the beginning, which is really interesting and makes a strong case, as well as the other study that is more wide sweeping, looks at things like maps, and just so much information. And we're gonna look at both of those, but let's hop right into it because a lot of people still believe that this was created in a lab and there was a while there where it came out that they weren't having the best lab practices there. You know, it was somewhat credible sounding for a little bit, but we need to use our brains here and look at the newest information and use some logic. This is the map that anybody who is interested in the origins should know about. We have these dots representing cases at the beginning of the pandemic. And what I'm gonna do here is give you two locations. We have location A here and location B right here. Based off this distribution of cases, do you believe that the origin was more likely A or B? Is it A or B? Well, right off the bat, B over there across the river is the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And I love Jon Stewart, he's great, he's even vegan, but he did go on a sort of a viral rant talking about how the novel coronavirus lab was right there, therefore it's probably from that. That's not what it's called. It's called the Wuhan Institute of Virology, okay. But as you can see, next to the virology place, there's like one dot. It's again across the river. No one's logically gonna be like, it's from there. But then of course, point A is that Wuhan wet market. Of course, this is where a ton of wild animals, which were actually bred on farms, were sold on a daily basis. And I have to say, this brings up a new potential animal that this virus jumped from humans to that I hadn't heard of before. Before we thought it might be the pangolin was number one suspect. We have a new suspect that we'll get to in a second. You probably never heard of them. It's not their fault. But first I just wanna mention the actual paper we're talking about here. And that is this one published in the journal Science very recently. And the title is, The Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market in Wuhan was the early epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic. It was NIH funded and includes authors from Oxford and a bunch of universities in the US and abroad. The study also presents an extremely interesting map of the positive COVID samples within the market itself. But for some background before that, based on a WHO report as the New Scientist reports, <clears throat> WHO revealed that 188 animals from 118 species sold in the market actually tested negative, while a thousand samples taken from surfaces at the market overwhelmingly tested positive for SARS coronavirus too. Now you'd be thinking, how is it possible that coronavirus was like everywhere, but none of these animals were testing positive? Unfortunately, it's probably because they were being killed at quite a fast rate. And from the new scientist again, by the time researchers had got there, it appears that the whole market had been shuttered and disinfected and all the animals had been culled. So this doesn't mean that no animals in the market ever had it. A lot of animals could have had it and then it could have spread to humans and then that could have just been a little while ago. But that brings me back to our recent science study because that has really interesting graphics like this one showing you know, the west side of the market, which is where the animals were sold, has a few hotspots. One in particular, this red box, is where there were reportedly cages of what are known as raccoon dogs. It lit up like a bonfire in that corner where the raccoon dogs were reportedly at. And the raccoon dogs are a canid. They're a member of the canine family. Like a fox, they are not the modern dog that we hang out with in our houses, but these are animals that can test positive for SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. And so they could easily have had it and been the intermediate animals between bats and humans. And there's also been alarms raised about other viruses based off recent studies that they can harbor as well, like other coronaviruses and more. And thinking about the raccoon dog and this red hotspot, I'm wondering, was this where that first jump to humans actually took place? Or was there perhaps a trail that we can follow the raccoon dogs back to an origin beyond that? I don't think that matters as much as that it's 
potentially part of this raccoon dog farming industry, or there's two other potential animals back to the science paper. And those other animals are red foxes and the hog badger, which I was not familiar with, but going to one of the researchers just to knock out that lab theory, they say that you know, with all the information we now have, Professor Stuart Neal of King's Colleges says, we quote, can't explain the data with regard to that lab theory, but quote, we're now as sure as we can be based on the fragmentary evidence we do have that this was a spillover event that happened in the market. And I would add that it's potentially two spillover events based off variants, which we'll get to in the genomic section in a second. But I wanna finish this raccoon dog origin situation because back to the study, they say that, quote, there was an extensive network of wildlife farms in Western Hubei province, Wuhan is in Hubei, by the way, including hundreds of thousands of raccoon dogs on farms in Enshi Prefecture, which supplied the Huanan market, the Wuhan wet market. Once again, emphasizing that wild animal market doesn't mean not farmed animals. They can be farmed animals. And I did look on the map and just Googled cave near Enshi province, and there's just a ton of caves, which brings me to the next quote, quote, this region of Hubei contains extensive cave complexes housing rhinophilus bats, which carry sars r coves <laughs> SARS-CoV-1 was recovered from farmed mast palm civets from Hubei in 2003 and 2001, so the predecessor. The animals on these farms, nearly 1 million, were rapidly released, sold, or killed in early 2020, apparently without testing for SARS coronavirus 2. So we have hundreds of thousands of these raccoon dogs being farmed in an area with caves with a lot of bats and they might've been harvesting those bats also to eat as well. So there could have been a lot of crossover between these animals. They could have been you know, in close areas with humans. So it's possible that the first couple cases could have been out there and luckily didn't spread because it's more of a rural area as crazy out there, but then they were moved. We have no idea either way, the wet market was the first modern urban origin of the virus. And this brings me to the second study that was published in that issue of the journal Science by some of the same researchers and other researchers as well on the genome situation here. And we can go over this pretty quickly. And more or less it has to do with how there were already two variants in the beginning. I mean, right now we basically can't even find wild type out in the population, the original SARS-CoV-2, but we had two even then, and they say, quote, the presence of potential animal reservoirs coupled with the timing of the lineage B primary case and the geographic clustering of early cases around the Huanan market support the hypothesis that SARS coronavirus 2 lineage B jumped into humans at the Huanan market in mid-November 2019. And as the journal Nature covered, talking about preprint articles, quote, the scientists confirmed that the samples contain SARS-CoV-2 sequences almost identical to those that have been circulating in humans. These scientists show that the two original virus lineages circulating at the start of the pandemic called A and B were both present at the market. Annoyingly, the researchers who had that information in China about both of those lineages being in and around the market waited two years to release it as a preprint in Nature, which added to a lot of potential confusion, sort of a vacuum which the lab theory grew in. But I wanna be careful to not put too much blame on just Chinese people in general. This is animal agriculture that is happening everywhere again as i've mentioned before the 1918 flu was likely from a small chicken farm in haskell kansas and looking forward it's really important to recognize that it is animal farming that has likely created this either way it's people's desire and consumption of meat from various animals that led to this virus jumping the population and led to just multiple years of frustration and a lot of carnage really. <laughs> and to this BBC article, the major risk of being distracted by looking for someone in a laboratory to blame for all this, quote, is that we run the risk of letting this happen again because we focused on the wrong problem. Ah. So it does appear that the whole lab idea was a bit of a red herring. We now have solid information from several lines of logic that this is where it happened. You know, that wet market in China, I recently at the UK Vegan Camp Out did a presentation on you know stopping the next pandemic, being vegan for a pandemic. And one of my slides was literally just titled this effing place and how it was probably really most likely where 
COVID started. And now we have a stamp of added certainty, at least. We can never be 100% sure of anything, but with all the information, looks like this is what's happening. So that's it for today. Feel free to comment down below what you think about all this, or is there any information I missed? Because I really wanted to get this video out to you guys as quickly as possible, so I didn't get to sweep all of the other background studies as much as I normally do. But I'm happy to get it out quickly. And of course, feel free to like and subscribe, share the video and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching.